first use of credit card notes was during the 13th century by the group known as the Knights Templar. Crossing back and forth from Jerusalem to Europe was treacherous. Thieves were common and carrying large amounts of coin was dangerous. Through a system of checks, the Knights allowed the deposits of money at the beginning of their journey and were only allowed to carry a cipher, which allowed funds to be withdrawn at the end of their journey. In 1950, the Universal Credit Card was issued by Diners Club Incorporated. The original 200 members could participate at 27 restaurants for a $3 annual fee. Credit cards gained in popularity following a Supreme Court case in 1978 that allowed nationally chartered banks to use the interest rate set in their home state. According to the Federal Reserve, there have been about 333.6 million credit cards and 22.6 billion transactions within the last year. The credit card industry is now worth $106.3 billion. While credit and debit cards have helped secure our money in the past and are now used much more frequently, we're still finding that we need to add extra security measures to continue to protect our money. Having to prevent valuable items from being stolen is nothing new. Just as theft can occur in one's own home while the front door is locked, credit or debit card information can be stolen as well. Prior to credit cards gaining in popularity, cash was a common payment option, but it is very susceptible to pickpockets and burglars. The growing popularity of credit cards has forced thieves to become more creative to steal money. Card fraud occurs when somebody deliberately uses another's card to make unauthorized and illegal charges. Because the thief is impersonating the actual cardholder to use the card, they are committing identity theft. Credit card fraud can occur in several ways. Today, phishing and skimming are among the most common techniques for acquiring card information. Phishing happens when a user is lured into providing their own sensitive data to thieves through what appears to be a legitimate website or a person in need of help. These scams come in many forms, but are often executed through email. They can also be convincing replicas of company websites with additional fields to enter in information, like credit card numbers. Skimmers are small devices that are often hidden within hardware that process credit or debit card data. A user's card information is stolen when a user makes a transaction through an ATM, gas pump, or other payment device. This allows thieves to use only a few units to gain a lot of card data. Most card fraud occurs in the United States. In fact, a 2015 research note from Barclays stated that the U.S. is responsible for 47% of the world's credit card fraud, despite only counting for 24% of total worldwide credit card volume. The high level of debit and credit card fraud in the United States also impacts other countries. Among UK-issued cards in 2015, 35% of fraud-related losses occurred in the United States, compared to 10% in France, 9% in Canada, and only 6% in Germany. Cross-border fraud occurs when criminals use a consumer's credit or debit card data in one country to make fraudulent transactions in another country. In 2014, 47% of fraudulent cross-border transactions on United Kingdom credit cards took place in the United States. U.S. credit card fraud is on the rise, too. About 31.8 million U.S. consumers had their credit cards breached in 2014, more than three times the number affected in 2013. Most experts believe that the reason the U.S. has a disproportionately high amount of fraud is because that it has been slow to adopt Europay MasterCard Visa, or EMV, a global standard in which credit cards carry computer chips that cut down on counterfeiting by dynamically authenticating credit cards. Countries that have deployed EMV have enjoyed a decrease in counterfeit fraud as a result, 70% in the U.K., for example, between 2005 and 2013. The U.S. is in the process of implementing EMV, and once it becomes widespread, counterfeit card fraud should drop here as well. But, as in other countries, other types of card fraud, especially card not present or online fraud, will probably grow. In the United States, card not present fraud is already a big problem. In fact, it accounted for 45% of all credit card fraud in 2014, followed by counterfeit card fraud at 37% and lost or stolen cards at 14%. The total value of card not present transactions is expected to grow from $9 billion in 2013 to nearly $19 billion in 2018, even as fraud at the point of sale shrinks due to the use of EMV chips. So what is EMV? EMV is a specification that is a global standard for interoperable credit and debit card payments, point of sale payment terminals and transaction processing networks based on chip card technology. These chip cards, also known as smart cards, 
contain embedded microprocessors that provide strong transaction security features and other application capabilities that are not possible with traditional magnetic stripe cards. The EMV specifications also provide for new, highly efficient transaction methods that cannot be achieved with traditional magnetic stripe cards. These include contact and contactless transactions, as well as mobile payment operations. The secure microprocessor chip on the EMV payment card contains the information needed for payments and additional protection features, which makes it significantly more secure than a traditional magnetic stripe card. EMV improves the security of payment transactions with the added functionality in three areas, card authentication, cardholder verification method, and online and offline authorizations. For card authentication, transactions require an authentic card validated either online using a dynamic cryptogram or offline using dynamic data authentication. The card verification method, or CVM, ensures that the person attempting to make the transaction is the person to whom the card belongs to using online PIN, offline PIN, signature, or no CVM. CVM always starts with the most secure method, downgrading only if necessary for issuer and merchant processor. Smart cards are not foolproof and are still susceptible to hacking. Since the EU transition over 10 years ago, they have seen increasingly tech-savvy criminals. Many experts believe that U.S. banks will see an increase in ATM fraud involving skimming over the next 12 months as the United States begins the switch to EMV technology. For fraudsters, there are only a few ways they can attempt ATM-related attacks by using such methods as card skimming where a customer's card information is captured at a merchant or ATM and used to produce counterfeit cards for fraudulent transactions. In this case, the customer sees a normal transaction and retains the card. Card trapping. When a customer inserts their card into an ATM, the card is physically captured at the ATM, comprising the PIN. Later, fraudsters can use the card to make fraudulent cash withdrawals with access to the PIN. Cash trapping. Instead of seizing the customer's card at the ATM, fraudsters will attach a device to an ATM that will trap any cash that the ATM tries to dispense. While the customer will retain their card, the fraudsters will later return to the ATM and retrieve the cash trapped inside the ATM. In February 2010, computer scientists from Cambridge University demonstrated that the offline PIN CVM is vulnerable to a man-in-the-middle attack. The fraudster connects a stolen card to an electronic circuit and to a fake card that is inserted into the terminal. Any four digits are typed in and accepted as a valid PIN. Coupled with the ability to downgrade the CVM, this could indicate the entire rewrite of the EMV system is necessary. While the transition to EMV technology is well overdue for U.S. consumers, retailers, and credit card issuers, it's important to recognize that fraudsters and cyber criminals will get better at bypassing EMV technology. You may ask, if someone steals my credit card, they can still use it anyways, right? One promising technology is Zwipe from Abether Technologies and is already in limited use in Europe right now. Here is a brief explanation from Zwipe on how it works. Fingerprint identification is about to be everywhere. You've seen it in the movies, on smartphones and tablets. And now, also on your payment card. Let me show you. Let's say I'd like some water. Quick, isn't it? And it's highly secure. And let me show you why. This is my payment card. And this is my PIN code. I place it here and I swipe. That's it. And if it's only a chip terminal, that's no problem either. And there's no transaction limits. Forget your PIN codes, forget your passwords. Another experimental technology being promoted by the French company Abether Technologies is rotating CCIDs. See the changing number on the signature panel? The mini ink screen is powered by a lithium ion battery the size of a postage stamp that's designed to last three years. A computer chip follows an algorithm to generate a new number every 40 or 60 minutes. Engineers have managed to squeeze it all into a regular thickness card. The changing code renders the card useless to anyone who has written down your credit card number, expiration date, and the code on the back. Furthermore, it would be a more complete solution than EMV alone as it addresses card not present transactions. We can expect to see it in circulation in Europe in 2017 if it catches on with major banks.
Is the future of credit card security no card at all? With millions spent by financial institutions each year on finding new ways to secure debit and credit cards, the solution to better banking security could be as simple as doing away with plastic cards altogether. Smartphones and their peripherals may well take over as our payment platforms of choice. Digital wallets are already available through providers like Google Wallet, Apple iPay, and PayPal. All of these use near-field communication and have their own payment gateways for card not present transactions. Earlier, we explained how the check system was introduced by the Knights Templar to prevent thieves from stealing their coins on their journey from Jerusalem to Europe, allowing them to safely move money from one place to another. Keeping valuables, especially those of monetary value, has consistently been an issue over time. Through the centuries, we've added increasingly more ways to transfer money, as well as more security measures to assist with those transfers. Consider the similarities between the journey of the Knights Templar with their check system to traveling abroad with the traveler's checks. Today, we still understand the importance of protecting our own finances. On their own, credit cards were considered secure since they didn't give a thief direct access to money. However, these thieves have adapted to the current conditions, pickpocketing digitally. With the advances of the internet, credit card fraud is now more prevalent, with almost half of all credit card fraud incidents being online, without the card being present. Emerging secure payment options are combating thieves from accessing or spending money that isn't theirs. Some of the latest secure options for payments include chip cards or smart cards, which store data on circuits rather than on a magnetic stripe. EMV, a standard for these chip cards, has already decreased credit card fraud in countries where it's required and is in the process of becoming required here in the United States. Rotating CCIDs help ensure that a protect portion of the credit card information is always changing, making it so that credit card information can't be written down and used later. The card must be in the user's hand when the credit card is used. Biometric authentication generally allows a user to verify themselves with their own features that are unique to them, like their iris, voice, or fingerprint. To secure payments, Zwipe is using fingerprint recognition, where the fingerprint works as someone's access code. Two-factor authentication, which is used mostly for online transactions, helps provide an extra level of security to verify the owner's identity. This is done by providing a generated code, or token, at regular intervals or when the user requests a new token. It can be generated from a cell phone application, text message, or keychain, and is used in addition to a regular credit card transaction. Unfortunately, these methods aren't perfect and can still be susceptible to thievery. Some of these could possibly be combined for extra protection but technically savvy people will likely be able to gain access again. So we need to continue to develop more secure options to continue protecting our valuables. Perhaps we will abandon credit cards completely and use anonymous payment options in the future or something like Bitcoin.